that was a blessing. <clears throat> Music is such an important part of worship. To be able to uh, praise God. That's what we're here for, right? We're here to praise God, to worship God, and also to listen to his word and take his word in. <clears throat> you know, um, I just want to explain something real quick here. My wife is the one that puts this together. And um, what we do, I put together my thoughts. After a lot of prayer, I put together my thoughts. And um, then we get together, and she starts looking for different slides. We start putting this, uh, well, we're going to speak on together. So I really appreciate my wife, the time she takes to listen to what I'm putting together. <clears throat> So uh, this morning, as you can see, our message this morning is on the blessings of discipleship. And so we're going to spend a little time on this. and We're going to see what a blessing it is. There's a lot of blessings in being a disciple, a follower of Jesus. Now, in the New Testament, um, you have followers and you also have disciples. There's uh, people that follow Jesus. There were crowds that followed Jesus, and they weren't necessarily disciples. Um, they were more looky loos. They were trying, you know, there to see the healings, they were there to see the miracles, the feeding. But they really weren't committed. They really weren't into in it for the long haul. And so there is a difference. Now it's true that disciples are also followers. But um, I just wanted to make that distinction there. <clears throat> that, uh, what's a di well, let's look at some definitions. First of all, a very general definition of what a disciple is. And we find that in uh, Webster's Dictionary. It says this. <clears throat> a disciple or follower of any teacher or school. A true disciple is not a student or a learner but a follower, one who applies, he applies what he's learned. So this is a general definition of what a disciple is. Now, the Bible describes more clearly, more clearly what a disciple is. And it says this in John chapter 8, verse 31, 32. Jesus then said to them, said to the Jews who believed in him, if you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know, shall know the truth, or will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. <clears throat> you know, a few verses in the um, New Testament have such a complete picture of what a disciple is. Now, the question is this. How does discipleship, because we're disciples, if you've been baptized, you've accepted Jesus Christ, how does discipleship begin? <clears throat> how does it start? And um, if we go back to the text, it says, and Jesus said to the Jews who what? Who believed in him. If you remain in my word, you are truly my disciple. If you believe, the discipleship begins it begins with faith believing in Jesus Christ. No works begins with faith. Faith in <clears throat> the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the Jews who had come to believe in him, to trust in him. <clears throat> so discipleship begins with Jesus Christ. It begins when we believe everything Jesus came to say about God. You know, he came to give us a, a fuller picture of the love of God, what God is like. You know, we know God better through the life, through the ministry, the healing and teaching of Jesus Christ. Because there were some bad pictures of what God was like. The flood and many things that took place in the Old Testament. <clears throat> so, when we believe, when we have faith in what he says about sin, what he says about what is really meaningful in life, in the life we live here. 
though faith, discipleship begins with faith. <clears throat> then the text goes on to say, Jesus said to the Jews who had come to believe in him, if you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples. What does that mean? What does it mean to remain in the word of Jesus Christ? Five things I want to mention real quickly here. So five things. It, um, but before we talk about, you know, getting into studying the Bible, really reading the Bible, I got to say this. <clears throat> before we study the Bible, we have to pray. This is no ordinary book. We need to pray before we study the Bible. And um, that, why, why, do we, why do I say that? Because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. They're spiritually discerned. And if we do not pray <clears throat> before we get into the Bible, you know, our senses become dull. If we get sleepy. Have you ever, has that happened to you before? You open the Bible, like any other book, you start reading the Bible, all of a sudden you start feeling sleepy. You know, this is so important what I'm saying here. To study the Bible, <clears throat> to read the Bible, we need to begin with prayer. Take time to pray. And it's really beautiful the way the Lord starts giving us discernment to be able to understand. Things start falling in place. I notice that in my own experience. Uh, I notice when I read a passage and I pray about it, an outline starts forming. In other words, we need to take time to pray so God can speak to us. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so prayer. Okay, I want to start off with that. And um, so we're going to look, what does it mean? When Jesus says, if you remain in my word, <clears throat> what does that mean? First of all, listening to the word of God. And there's so many mediums now, ways to listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God before you make a decision, a major decision, any decision in your life. Try to get the guidance <clears throat> of the Lord in the in your life, what you're going to do, could be school, could be work, whatever it is, try to listen to what the Bible, what the Lord has to say. Second, it means remaining in the Word of God, continuing with the Word of God. It means that you never stop learning. The word in Greek for, learn, for a disciple, the word disciple in Greek, it means, it's mathetis in Greek, means learner. We never stop learning. That's part of our life. So um, we never get to the point where we could stop learning. I've heard people say, is it kind of, that might, do I have an echo? No. I've heard people say, you know, or, you know, they, they get to a point where they feel they know everything. They know everything there is to know about the church or whatever. But a true disciple is a learner throughout our life, throughout our experience upon this earth. We're going to be learning more about Jesus Christ and <clears throat> what he came here to show, to do. So learning is a very important part. A disciple <clears throat> is a learner. Keep that in mind. A shut mind is the end of discipleship. You think you know it all? You think, you know, you know, know I've got it all pack, packaged right? No. We need to continue studying the Word, memorizing the Word of God. That's another thing. That's a, that's a uh, blessing to memorize. You know, um, I remember back in the 70s, there was a pastor, minister that was feeling auditoriums, convention centers, and he was saying this. Students, listen to this, if you're a student. When he went to college, this was Bill Gothard, when he went to college, he started memorizing. <clears throat> and what he noticed, that his grace shot up when he started memorizing. 
So he says for a while there, he, he stopped and went back down. <clears throat> so he started memorizing. He really exercised his memory muscle because he was able to memorize two versions of the Bible. Can you believe that? Two versions of the Bible. And he used to feel, I, I went to see him at the Cow Palace with my wife. We were back there, we were still in school. 10,000 people there, and this, this, he was speaking, I mean, Bible. It was, I had never seen something like that. He used to do Teen Institute. But, and I went to one of these special sessions he was having for pastors. <clears throat> I got in, I went into that special session. And he was telling us, he got to the point in memorizing scripture. He got to the point where he could memorize a chapter, a Bible chapter, in half an hour. We were like, wow, my goodness. <clears throat> but he really became, he really learned a lot. I know others that have practiced memorizing and what it's done for them. Okay, so remaining in God's word. If we're going to be his disciples, if we're going to be with, have a relationship that's going to go through life with Jesus, we need to remain in his word. What else does that mean? It means we're going to dig deeper into the word of God. We're going to dig deeper and... Um, None of us here have read the words of Jesus and can say we understand everything, all the meanings. No. But we're going to learn a lot by studying the word. We never get to the point, like I mentioned. We have to continue to dig. You know, a lot of the, it's not on the surface. I found myself, when you read the Bible, you know, you have to take, pray for God to give you discernment. But we need to dig it deep. You need to read the word. The difference between a great book and one which is fashionable or mediocre is that you read it once and you put it aside. Some books you don't even finish. <clears throat> but the Bible is a book that we could always go back to and be blessed by it. My wife and myself, you know, I pastored in the uh, desert for a long time. They had me out in the desert. Barstow, Victorville. Oro Grande, all that area there. I used to pastor out there. <clears throat> Not far from us, maybe 10 miles, was Calico Ghost Town. How many have been there to Calico Ghost Town? I guess <laughs> number one. We used to take people there. they come over to visit us. We'd go to Calico. In 1880, 1890, um, they discovered silver. There are silver mines there. There's around 500 of them. But the big one is Old Glory. And uh, it's a mine. The fact that this, they were able to excavate there $2 million, I mean $20 million of silver. Back then, that was a lot of money. <clears throat> and so if you go there, you could go. And it, it, for me, it was incredible. Bigger than this room, but how about the church here? You go in there, and you see how far they dig to get to those veins of silver. It was not in the surface. You know, the word of God <clears throat> is like a mind. You can, you know, read it and you'll always get a blessing from it. You know, it's um, to study the word of God. You know, people ask, hey, what's our part? What's our part? We're saved by grace, we're saved by the cross. What's our part? Our part is what we're talking about here today. Maintaining a relationship with Jesus Christ. Every day. We never know what a day will bring. There are surprises we have. You know, so we need to maintain a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. <clears throat> so, someone, someone was said this. Someone said, you know, sometimes the word of God is like dessert. You know, most of us like dessert. You know, it seems to, <clears throat> you read something that just, it's, the Bible is just speaking to you. Just what you needed for that day. You open that psalm or a proverb or gospel, it seems to be talking to you. It's like dessert. But someone also said, sometimes the word of God is like cereal. Dry, but very nourishing. In other words, <clears throat> it doesn't matter 
<clears throat> what you're going through, the Word of God will bless you. So to remain in God's Word, you listen to the Word. And don't forget, a disciple is what? A learner. We never stop learning. Throughout our life, we learn. It's so important. Remaining in God's word also means, <clears throat> and here comes a real big blessing, obeying God's word. Being able to obey in order to find, you know, God wants to bless us in so many ways. And so he wants to do certain things for our good, to help us, help us be blessed and live a good life. For example, you have diabetes or whatever sickness you have. If you go to the doctor and he tells you, do this, here's a uh, prescription. Follow this and you're going to feel better. If you believe in that doctor, if you have faith in that doctor, you're going to do it. <clears throat> you're going to go out and you're going to practice maybe a new diet or whatever it is. Jesus wants us to obey what he says. Uh, obey, obedience is a fruit of faith. If we really believe something, we're going to do it, and it's for our good. He wants to bless us in so many ways. He wants to bless us. So, um, true disciples will not only hear the word, but they put it, put it into action. <clears throat> James, the brother of Jesus, said this. James chapter 1, verse 22. But be you doers of the word, and not only, not only hearers, or hearers only, receiving, deceiving yourselves, your own selves. So the word of God has to get in us. It has to come in us. Someone just said, someone said, it's not so much, it says, it says, it is not how much we get into God's word, but how much God's word gets into us. And, with, and they get sent to us by taking time. You know, finding time to be with Jesus. Finding time to spend with him. You know, that's not easy. When we say the part of a Christian, what are, is our role? We say, you know, taking time with the Lord, with his word. That's easy. It's not. He'll do everything in the book to keep you away from the word. Satan you know, we're too busy, we're doing this. We're... So we need to carve out time, <clears throat> intentionally, carve out time to be with the Lord. For some of you, it might be in the morning. I don't know your schedules, but carving up, t up time, it'll make the biggest difference. I have found in my own experience, the more time I spend with Jesus, the more I get done. <laughs> you know, he blesses what we do. <clears throat> he blesses in many ways. So it's so important to put that into practice. Now, remaining in the word of Jesus. A disciple is one that brings others to Jesus. What the, master, <clears throat> the master teacher was Jesus. And he had disciples. Now, the purpose for him to have them for three years, discipling them, <clears throat> so they could be master teachers. They could be disciples. Bringing people to Jesus leading them to Jesus. <clears throat> a beautiful example of that is Andrew, the disciple Andrew. You know, um, when Jesus was walking by, you know, jo Andrew and John were disciples of John the Baptist. They were disciples of who? John the Baptist. Jesus was walking by. <clears throat> John the ba Baptist said, the Lamb of God that takes the way the sin of the world. And both, well, Andrew is one of the two that followed Jesus. And you know what he did immediately after he, he found Jesus? He went to look for his brother. His brother. He went to look for his brother and told him what he had found, the Messiah. We have found the Messiah. He started telling his brother <clears throat> about, about Jesus. Not only did he tell his brother about Jesus, he brought his brother to Jesus. 
And that's when Jesus changed Simon's name from Simon to Peter. Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee relates a story that uh, another doctor, a missionary doctor, Dr. R.C. Campbell, told him. In a mission hospital, in a mission hospital, <clears throat> they brought a blind man. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies. <clears throat> they, brought a, they brought a blind man to the hospital. And Dr. Campbell operated on him and um, got rid of, he removed his cataracts. So this blind man could see. He was so happy. He was just thrilled <clears throat> that he could see. And so he went home jumping. I mean, he was just ecstatic. He went home with his sight. <clears throat> but he came back two weeks later. Dr. Campbell says he came back two weeks later. <clears throat> he had one end of a rope. One end of a rope. He was pulling 40 blind people to the hospital. 40 blind people. I mean, he had found something so good, <clears throat> he wanted to let others know. Shouldn't we do that? be doing the same thing? I mean... We have found Jesus. We have found something so special. And um, so we need to also share Jesus Christ. God opens opportunities, opens for us to be able to share our testimony, share what Jesus has done for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... <clears throat> A disciple, the Bible goes on to tell us in that text we read, discipleship gives us it's a knowledge of the truth. You know, what is truth? What does John 14, 6 say? What did Jesus say? <clears throat> I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. If we find Jesus and what he was about, everything... He says, now, it's interesting that John 17, 17 <clears throat> says, Sanctify them <clears throat> by thy truth. Thy word is truth. To learn from Jesus is to learn the truth. Yes, you will know the truth, he says, Jesus said. And what is truth? Christ Jesus became, came to show us what truth is in the flesh. A better example. <clears throat> Jesus wouldn't have come into this world. <clears throat> we wouldn't have all the miracles, all the teachings, everything that Jesus came to give us. We're very blessed. We're saved by Jesus Christ. Yes. So he came to show us what the truth is. What is really important in our life? <clears throat> And what is not? So what are some of the blessings from discipleship? It says discipleship <clears throat> results in freedom. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Make you free. The truth makes us free from what? I just have, I wrote, put four things here. Number one, we have the blessing Freedom from fear. Because we never walk alone. If you become a disciple of Jesus, if you've accepted Jesus Christ, you'll never walk alone in this journey through this earth. He'll be with you. I'm talking about that paralyzing fear. There's some fear that's, that's important to have. But he'll be with us. <clears throat> Beautiful promise. I don't have it up here. But one you've heard before. And, <clears throat> and that is... Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, Jesus said. Be not dismayed. In other words, discouraged. It says, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you with my righteous right hand. That's what Jesus said. So we don't have to fear. Number two, <clears throat> it brings freedom from ourselves. We cannot change ourselves. 
<clears throat> excuse me, let me get a little drink of water here. He's the only one that can change us. Can the leper change his spots? No. The Ethiopian? No. Only Jesus can change our hearts. And <clears throat> we're going through a restoration process right now, all of us. What the Bible calls growing, it calls sanctification. It's a work of a lifetime. It frees us from ourselves. There's a change taking place in you. You might not notice it. You might not see it, but others do. <clears throat> Freedom from ourselves. And you know what? It's a, he also frees us from other people. You know, a lot of people wondering, you know, I remember when we became Christians in our home many years ago. <clears throat> we were afraid, what's, what's, what's my... What are my, what's my family going to say? Because I've accepted Christ to walk in, in this faith. What are they going to say? Well, it frees us from that. It frees us from the what are people going to say if I now walk with the Lord, if I now accept the Lord. Especially young people, a lot of times there's a lot of peer pressure. Well, with the, the freedom that we get with Jesus, it frees us from that. And there was some, um, it was H.G. H. Wells once said this, <clears throat> that the voice of our neighbors sounds louder in our ears than the voice of God. Many times we're so worried about others, what they're going to think. It's a personal decision we have to make if we're going to walk with Jesus Christ. We have to make that decision for ourselves. And it brings freedom when you do that, make that decision. <clears throat> you don't care what others say. I'm more worried about what Jesus said. Yes. <clears throat> the other, and this is the most important one right here, freedom. <clears throat> the most important freedom we're all going to receive, that we all receive, is the forgiveness of our sins, a forgiveness of the guilt, of the shame of our past life. That freedom. There's a lot of people living with guilt, with shame, things they did. That is a freedom that we get from Jesus Christ. When we accept Christ and confess our sins, there's a beautiful promise I have here. <clears throat> I think it's up here. <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> you will again have compassion on us. You will thread our sins underfoot and hurl our iniquities into the depths of the sea. He gets rid of our sins, our mistakes, our shortcomings, our faults. We've all made mistakes. We've all fallen short. When we accept Jesus Christ, he casts our sins into the depths of the sea. In another text, Isaiah 30, 38, 17, behind his back, <clears throat> where he doesn't see him no more. So we're really blessed. Yes, he breaks those chains. Those chains, they bind us to sin and enable us to live a new life, being born again, being able to live a new life through the grace and the power of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so he invites us. He invites us a call to discipleship. And Jesus said to the Jews, it says, Jesus, Jesus says to the Jews who have come to believe in him, if you remain in my word, if you remain in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Jesus can bring freedom. And so discipleship, it's by faith, remaining in his word, listening to his word. It's a journey, and remember, we never stop learning. It's an ongoing road. And we need to dig deep. Pray, pray and dig deep. And obey the word. And lead others to Jesus Christ like that Chinese man. God bless you. <clears throat>